Well, it's my pleasure to interview Dr. Peter Salovey, and you are recognized as one of the world experts in the field. But rather than me introduce you, Dr. Salovey, can I get you to tell me a little bit about, for the, the four people on the planet who don't know who you are, <laughs> <laughs> who you are and, and what you do? Sure. Uh, I'm Peter Salovey, and uh, I'm a uh, professor of psychology uh, at uh, Yale University, where I also serve as the dean of Yale College. And uh, I've been there for many years now, I think uh, uh, more than uh, about 25 on the faculty. And I was a graduate student in psychology at Yale, and before that an undergraduate at Stanford. Okay. And in 1990, Jack Mayer and I published a paper called Emotional Intelligence. And uh, I think that was the first systematic use of the term and um, laying out of a model of emotional intelligence that then has gone in many different directions uh, with input from many different people. Okay. And I still hear every once in a while, well, what is it and why should it matter? It's that soft stuff. Mm -hmm. How do you respond? Or do you even get that question anymore? Oh, I get that question. I think part of it, partly uh, we get that question because the uh, uh, there's a, a kind of inconsistency in the way people use the term emotional intelligence. They, it's often linked to anything that someone thinks is important, ah. uh, for example, in the workplace or in schools, that isn't measured by traditional uh, IQ or, or ability measures. And so um, the term emotional intelligence gets mapped onto many different things. Um, we much prefer um, using emotional intelligence to describe a set of skills having to do with perceiving, understanding, managing, and using emotions. Okay. And when, uh, when we focus on those skills, I think the reaction we get to it is, oh, that makes sense to me. Right. That sounds important, rather than this is all just soft stuff. And I'm interested. I, I went on um, your website, on the Yale website, and, and read that you're doing research on the psychological significance and function of human moods and emotions and understanding how they affect health protective. So things like how do they affect people who are infected with HIV, if I'm understanding it correctly, or how does it affect people who are going through cancer treatments, or the conditions that actually existed to perhaps create those poor health conditions. Mm -hmm. So, so um, we're very interested, in, in even before we started writing about emotional intelligence per se, we were very interested in arousing emotions in our laboratory and then looking at how people in different emotional states uh, behave. Okay. So what do they pay attention to? What can they remember? Uh, how do they reason? How do they make decisions? How do they interact with other people? Are they more or less willing to be helpful? Uh, how do they uh, uh, make friends, form relationships, er er everything? Uh, having to do with the impact of emotions on other psychological processes. Okay. And our, our goal was really to show that although emotions occasionally make other processes worse, often they can improve decision-making, reasoning, creativity, help us with, mem with memory, help us pay attention to what's important. And so, um, uh, when we say that you know the functions of human emotions, the idea is what, uh, why do we have an emotional system, and how does it help us rather okay. than how does it get in the way? Um, we now are doing a lot of work on health communication and what emotions are the best to arouse when trying to get someone to think about ways to prevent cancer, okay. ways to prevent HIV/AIDS. You could, sometimes you could arouse fear, or guilt, or joy, or pride. And under different circumstances, different emotions are going to uh, matter, more or less. Okay. We focused a lot on when is it better to present the upside versus the downside, the positive consequences of doing the behavior versus the negative consequences of not doing it. So for, would be an example if I was trying to convince women to go for breast screening exams. Right. Do I, do I tell them that, do you want to leave your children orphans, which would be more fear-based, exactly. or 
This is good because it's a preventative measure and it's you're doing something healthy. Well, that's so. exactly what we test. And it turns okay. So ah. behaviors that are more screening oriented, like mammography, right, tend to um, uh, people are more persuaded to do them when you focus on the downside. It turns out. Oh, okay. Uh, behaviors that are more preventative, like uh, eating fruits and vegetables, not smoking, using sunblock at the beach, uh, tend to be better promoted. Um, with positive messages, with upside 